source technology means a bunch of different things. It can mean open technologies, like HTML5. It can mean open source, as far as the code and contributing and, and fixing your own things if something doesn't go right. So there's there's a there's a sort of duality of what do we what do we want? Do we want that open environment where we get the latest and greatest? Both the browsers are all trying to leapfrog each other, but it's not dictated by any one company. Or do we want a sort of safe, sound environment where the company is providing all the necessity for you, but you're on their timetable and what they believe the future is supposed to be? Okay. So this leaves you with a question now. Okay, great. You know, where does where does Sprout work on it? You, you talked about a couple of things, but you know, we're here about we're here to learn about Sprout. Work. Okay, so let me see if I can take you down a path. So we have a bit of a continuum going on. On one side, we have web applications. On the other side, we have native applications. We talked about what is a web application. You have high deployability. You know, most of the code and the data happens to sit on the server side. There's latency involved whenever you call, right? But you can you can broadcast your information out to multitudes of different platforms, depending on the complexity of your web application. Over here, we have a native application. And why do we have a native application? Because we have we can install locally, which I guess is nice. We can hold and retain the information on the operating system, so you don't have to be online, although everybody's online these days, but still, if you don't have access to the internet, you can still plug away in your PowerPoint presentation. And again, you get the user experience. Let me be clear, I could do an Excel program based on a web application and a native application. Functionally, exactly the same. User experience, completely different. You can imagine clicking on each of those cells, typing and stuff, and doing 250 millisecond delay at best for each thing you do, versus bam, 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 bam. Click on the cells, type in the stuff, you get the raw performance of, of, the, of the native operating system or the native platform itself. So what did, I, just made, I just mentioned a few key words there. What we're really talking about are two key terms. We're talking about high deployment, and we're talking about user experience. Okay. So based on these two terms, there's a couple things that straddle between the two. The first and most important is code and data. What did I say about web applications, especially the more traditional types of stuff? Where does all the code and data lie? Always stays on the server side. But with Twitter, more of the code and data got shoved over to the browser so it stays more native, right? Not a lot of it, but a good chunk of it. On the native application, all the code and data, for the most part, is there. At least when it comes to like something like Excel spreadsheet, all the code and data is there. When it came to Tweety, all the code was here, a lot of the data is there, but we fetch portions of the data that we want and bring it more locally so we can act on it and we get that fast user experience. And it stays there even when we shut off our computer, turn it back on. Okay? So that's the first and foremost as far as where we start to pivot between these two. So let's go on to something else. Platform. Again, platform meant a couple different things. It meant the size of the device as far as screen resolution. It meant CPU usage. It meant memory usage, right? And it also meant the events. Not do I just get mouse events and keyboard events, but I get touch events. Now, if you're a Wikipedia, well, you're kind of out of luck because you're not taking advantage of it. But Wikipedia doesn't care because it's all about just delivering you information and they think that's good enough. And that's great. I use it all the time and it, it serves my purpose. But if you're somebody who wants to take advantage of that, on the native side, you get all of that. On the web development side, you're more restricted to what the browser allows you to do, what it exposes, right? Then, of course, we talked about closed versus open technology. So when it comes to the web applications, you guys get to drive your own boat. Whatever the latest browsers offer, you guys get to jump on top of it. I want to use web sockets. I want to use CSS3. So long as the browser supports it, I'm going to take advantage of it because I'm pushing the limits. On the native application front, 
we're beholden to what the offer uses. Now that's not to say you can't use open source technology on native. Like as an example, I can use Redis. I can install it with native open source. But I dictate my own terms, or I have more control over the destiny of the technology. If there's a bug, if I want to add a new feature, I can extend it. That's not to say that when it comes to the web application, that there isn't a concept of clothes, because you still have the idea of Flash, Silverlight, so on and so forth. So we're trying to pivot, and what we really want to do is take advantage. We want to control our own destinies and use things like HTML5 for our own advantage. So we got a couple different terms going on here. Remember, the first two we started off with, user experience and deployment. Then we pivot. We pivot on code and data, platform, and open technology. Wouldn't it be nice if somehow we could bring all of these together? We could have a framework that provides us the ability to give that user experience more natively. We have a framework that allows us to have deployability, but also adapt to our needs as far as how much we want to deploy. We have an ability to give as much data and as much code or as little code and as little data as we want, depending on the restrictions of the browser. The platform, we want to take advantage of all the platform has to give. I want to use those touch bits. I want to use that orientation, right? As long as the browser exposes it, I want to tap into it. And I want it to be easy. I don't want to do all this plumbing myself. And finally, open technologies. It's great that you have a framework that says we provide you user experience deployment. Uh, you can pivot on code and data as much as you want or less as you want, and you get a platform. But if it's, if it's rigid and it doesn't allow you to go any further, then what good is it? You want a framework that is adaptable. Technology moves fast. The web moves really fast. Today's web socket, and who knows what tomorrow, right? There's all these different things. So you want a framework that says, we're going to give you all the plateau and the platform you need, all the power you need. But if you need to inject a new type of technology that we haven't thought of or we haven't exploited yet, you can put it in there and still make the most out of it. Don't want to. Is that play? Yeah, sure. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. It's not, I'm hungry. <laughs> I'll say there's extra. <laughs> so I think you know where I'm going now. User experience, deployment, code and data, platform, open technologies. We want a framework that gives us all this. And what do we get? We get Scrap Code. I'm starting to see grins in the audience. I'm starting to see people going, I get it. I know what Scrap Code is about now. And this is where I want to grab you guys. Because this is where things are going. Now, one thing that's happening is that other people know that Scrub Core is becoming a success, and they want to get on it too. And I like the competition. And they're trying to do all these things that Scrub Core is also trying to do. So why Scrub Core? Right? We've already got to the point of where we understand the convergence of all of these concepts. So what else does Scrub Core happen to give? And with that, I'm going to stop right here, and I'm going to start with some demos. OK? So the first demo I want to give. is something that uh, at least the Americans in the audience, which I think there's like three of us, four of us, <laughs> is uh, NPR, National Public Radio. And um, there's a company called Strobe. Who is who, 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 who heard, heard of Strobe? Strobe, yeah, okay. So the guy who created uh, Strobeport originally, his name is Charles Jolly, and he is the, the founder of the, of the company Strobe, and it's all based on Strobeport. So they actually built a Strobeport app for NPR, and I'll show you what it looks like. And you can get it off the web store, it's free. And you might recognize this uh, if you use the iPad. So this is all 100% Sprout Core. So immediately, from a user experience, things are flipping through very easily. I can click on it, because we have a lot of the data locally now, we've fetched it. And I'm not really refreshing. What happens is because we have all the code base there, I can quickly move around without having to go and fetch more code, bring it in, fetch more data, bring it in. It's all localized now. And of course, I can scroll up and down, and I'm using touch events, all that kind of stuff. It's pretty good. But that's not all. Let me go in to my iPad. The same, and you guys can actually get this on your iPad. That application that you see here 
the Wi-Fi is working. Ah, there we go. A little slower. Okay, perfect. So what you got, what you guys are seeing here on your desktop, you're also seeing here on your <coughs> iPad. Okay. And guess what? All this data has been localized. The data has been fetched in using XHR request AJAX requests. And here's the beauty. Remember the platform concept? Watch this. Triple finger. All the touch support is built in. You get that for free. 